Hey there! Welcome back to another episode of Talking Cinema. This time, everything sounds and looks amazing, doesn't it? Um, this will take a little bit getting used to, but it will be worth it because, uh, as you can see, everything sounds and looks a lot better than it did before. Now you can actually hear the difference between my new microphone that I bought and my other one, and it's not just a subtle difference, it's a drastic difference. Well... It's because I finally moved away from the Logitech webcam software that I was using to record video from, and I figured out that the editing software, the video editing software that I have called uh, Wondershare, Wondershare Fil Filmora, try to say that five times fast, actually has the ability to record video and audio. So I was like, all right, let's give this a test, see if it sounds any different. I can't believe I just now figured this out. I just now found out that my editing software that I bought had the capability of doing this and recording in 1280 by 720p and had HD audio and got the most out of my mic. I could not believe it, but hey, I'm glad I figured it out eventually. Um, anyway, just taking a look at Screen Rant and giving you guys a few uh, of my thoughts on some... Movie news and some movie trailers and stuff like that. Somebody actually asked me about the Dark Tower trailer. I'll just talk about that briefly right now. I saw the trailer for the Dark Tower. And, I don't know, it didn't really grab me. To me, it looked kind of unimpressive and kind of generic. Uh, I've never, I haven't read the books, so I don't know what to say about that. But from the trailer, it reminded me of stuff from book, like Book of Eli or Jonah Hex. That's not a good thing. I like Idris Elba. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the movie someday for him. But it, it's not a movie that I want to see in the theater. Uh, based off that trailer. Um, and Matthew McConaughey looks like he's really miscast as the villain. I just don't buy him as a bad guy. It just doesn't seem like it's a very good casting choice. Now... Um, but there was some interesting kind of stuff in there, but I don't know. It just doesn't really interest me that much. It wasn't that impressive of a trailer for me. Uh, I saw the second trailer for Atomic Blonde. That movie looks fucking awesome. Uh, I cannot wait to see that film. Uh, really looks like it's right up my alley. Charlize Theron looks like she's going to kick a ton of ass. I love that it's directed by one of the guys who did John Wick, so it's in good hands. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I saw a trailer for Valerian. That movie looks like it has it's going to have some amazing visuals and it's definitely going to look like the budget is on the screen. The problem is it also looks like a film that's going to be kind of empty uh, in terms of characters. Visually it's going to be impressive, but character-wise, I don't know. Having the two leads be Dane Dehan and uh, the, uh, Carla Devying. I, I don't I can't say her last name. She the girl who played Enchantress and Suicide Squad doesn't really make me really gung ho about the film. It honestly is a turn off for me. They just don't seem like they're strong enough actors to really carry this film. So I, I I'm definitely gonna not gonna see it in the theater. And I might check it out someday down the road for Luke Besson, because I like I like his work for the most part. But yeah, it looks like a rental for me, just like the Dark Tower, and also it looks like a bomb. Because I see, I'm seeing the reaction from people who've seen the trailer, and they're all like, well, this reminds me of Avatar, or this reminds me of this, or this reminds me of that. And when that happens, the movie usually is not going to do that well. Because too many people are like, this is too familiar to me. Uh, but yeah, well, we'll see. We shall see. Kingsman the Golden Circle... That was an awesome trailer. That's a number sequel I am actually really looking forward to. I love The Kingsman. I saw it a while back, and I, I really enjoyed it. I didn't get around to reviewing it yet, though, and I want to. And so this gives me the opportunity to watch it again and uh, then review it before the sequel comes out. Hopefully check out the sequel as well. And speaking of sequels, I saw The Fate of the Furious, and I will save... My full thoughts for a later review, but if you want some su a summary of my thoughts on it, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. Had some great action. I thought it was a big step up from the last film. Had a few nitpicky things uh, that I didn't like about it, 
But for the most part, I thought it was a really good movie. It's one of the best films in the franchise. I would say, at the time being, off the top of my head, it's my second favorite film in the franchise after Fast Five. Yeah, I liked it that much. Now we're into Screen Rant, checking out some stuff on here. Guy Ritchie's live-action Aladdin, I don't give a fuck. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2, I was supposed to see that this weekend, but things didn't turn out that way, so I'll probably check it out sometime next week. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Blade Runner 2049, better than the original, claims Dave Batista. Batista, really? Come on, man. Maybe it is, but I, I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt that. I don't think that's... I don't, I don't think it's going to be better than the original. But we shall see. There's going to be a third SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Wow. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I stopped giving a fuck about SpongeBob since I was like a teenager. I really... It's insane to me how SpongeBob is still as popular as it was back then, and it's still running on Nickelodeon. There's no new cartoons. Well, there are some new cartoons, but for the most part, SpongeBob is still going, and it's still insane to me how it's still going strong. Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, we'll check. I'll check it out sometime. Alien Covenant. People have asked me about it. I saw the trailer. I, I talked about my thoughts on the trailer before in another Talking Cinema. I was like, eh, visually it looks like it's impressive. But I said the same thing about Prometheus. It looks like it might be better than Prometheus, but that's not saying much. Oh, it looks like it's not going to stink like a giant bag of shit like Prometheus did. But it might still stink pretty bad. You know, maybe just stink like a pile of... Uh, rotten eggs or or it'll stink like old dry shit but it won't be as bad as uh, fresh shit that's in a bag that's lit on fire but um we shall see we shall see my mom's gonna be really busy with kong reviews and stuff like that and some other stuff so i don't know if i'm gonna have time for alien if i do i'd save it for the end of the month um I would like to revisit the Alien franchise because a lot of my reviews I've had to delete because of copyright. So, yeah, but at the same time, I gotta watch it like Alien 3 again. I gotta watch Alien Resurrection. I gotta, you know, and I'm just like, uh, Prometheus and ah, uh, you know, I just, I, but I do want to watch Alien and Aliens again, but I don't want to watch those other ones again. But if I do, that way I can finally put the final nail in the coffin on Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection and the Alien franchise. So, we'll see. We shall see. Aquaman, I don't give a fuck about Roman Reigns of the Sea. He can fuck off. Uh, da, 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 da. David Lynch says he's done making movies. That doesn't surprise me. He hasn't made a film since Inland Empire. <laughs> In 2006. I'm glad he's coming back to do uh, Twin Peaks though for Showtime. And I'm definitely curious about that. Thor 3. I really like the latest trailer for Thor Ragnarok. It looked like a lot of fun. I guess there's going to be a new Blade Runner 2049 trailer coming out pretty soon. Alright, cool. I'd like to see that because the teaser looked visually impressive and interesting. But it, there wasn't a lot to it. Rogue One composer Michael Giacchino wants to score the Batman. Uh, I I don't know. Could you get someone else? Because I, I don't even remember Rogue One even having a score. Except for that inappropriate heroic score that, opened in the, begin had, that the movie opened up with. <laughs> it just didn't really fit with the opening of the movie. Terminator 2 3D. It's going to be a new release of the film in 3D. If the 3D is any bit as good as the 3D at the Universal Studios attraction, T2 3D Battle Cross Time, that might be a good movie to see in 3D. I might see it anyway because it's T2 in fucking 3D and it's T2 in the theater. I've never seen T2 in the theater. I think that would be pretty cool. So, 
I definitely might see that. It, yeah, I already talked about it. Stephen King's shit. I really don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> I, I've I've said enough. I've said my piece. Equalizer 2. First Equalizer sucks. So, hey, I mean... I guess you're starting at ground zero. I mean, I'm not going to see it in the theater. I don't even know if I'm going to see it, period. But if I do check it out, I definitely go into it from the perspective of, hey, you're starting from ground zero. The only way... The only place to go up the only place to go from here is to go up at least i i hope so at least that's what i think as far as i know it could go down could be worse than the first equalizer because the first equalizer had its moments the problem was it didn't own the r rating the action was pretty bland there wasn't a lot of it and overall it was just a disappointing movie to me it's pretty dull and boring and forgettable James Bond 25, I've heard that Danu Craig is up for coming back for one more movie, good. I hope he actually has a little bit more emotion this time though, and isn't sleepwalking through his role like he did in Spectre, because otherwise, if he does the same thing, then I honestly don't want him to come back. Wonder Woman, not very wonderful, not so wondrous to me, don't care, don't give a shit. Melissa McCarthy is going to star in a puppet comedy called The Happy Time Murders. Sounds like a skip. All these ads for these fucking sideshow collectible Star Wars figures on Screen Rant. I don't care. I, and I don't understand. What, what's crazy about these sideshow toys or these hot hot toys toys, they're super photorealistic. I get it. But the prices are ungodly. $200, $300, $500. You're going to have to get, get a personal loan to be able to afford one of them. And what are you going to do? Just put it on a shelf somewhere? Like, for that amount of money, for 200 300 bucks, I could go to the pawn shop and I could buy 200 or 300 DVDs. For that amount of money, I could get a lot of stuff on my wish list on Amazon. Why the hell would I spend that on a little toy? Like, an not really a little, but I mean, an action figure that I'm not going to use for a lot of action. I'm just going to set it on a shelf somewhere. Or keep it in its box. I don't get that. I don't get the people who buy shit just to keep them in the box anyway. I mean, that's just crazy to me. I bought one copy and to to uh, use, like people with Blu-rays. I bought one Blu-ray to use, and I bought another one to keep it sealed. What do you think these Blu-rays are? Fucking action figures? What do you think they are? Comic books from the 50s or 40s or 30s? And you do, you do know that eventually the market's going to fall out for that stuff, too, like it did for comics. It's inevitable that the market is always going to fall for something like that. So, yeah, you can keep it sealed all you want to, but it doesn't mean it's going to make it more profitable or it's going to make it a guaranteed profit for you in the future. Anything that's a collector's market, eventually some, it falls out and the prices go right in the toilet. Unless it's something like Nintendo games for some reason. I highly doubt Blu-ray, limited edition Blu-rays are going to become like Nintendo cartridges. Or Nintendo games with the box. But we shall see. Maybe I'll be proven wrong in the future. But... I gotta say, I'm not a fan of those people who buy multiple copies just so they can keep one in a safe somewhere. Or, I'm gonna put this one on a shelf unopened. Or, I'm gonna put, you know, it's just like, I don't I don't get it. And it also pisses me off because you're, especially if it's a limited edition Blu-ray. Because then you're, you're hogging one for just to keep it in a case. Just to look at it. And you're preventing someone from getting a copy 
who genuinely would want it and would want it to actually use it for its purpose. But, you know, that's just my personal opinion. Logan's going to come out on Blu-ray. Cool. I'll wait a little bit. But I definitely would like to get my hands on the Blu-ray eventually. I don't care about the black and white version. I don't give a fuck. I know I sound like, you know, I'm irritated. Yeah, I am. I'm kind of... What's the big fucking deal with these new black and white versions? Who gives a shit? Doesn't make the movie any better. Doesn't make it any worse either. Like, what is the fucking point of a black and white version of Logan? It's the same movie, it's just black and white. Maybe I'm missing something here. I don't know. Dunkirk, new, Christopher Nolan's new movie. I'm not interested in that film. I'm just not. And I'm definitely not after the IMAX uh, pro, a preview of the film blew my eardrums out of my ass when I uh, went and saw the... I, th- I forgot what movie I saw. It might have been Kong Skull Island. I think it was Kong Skull Island. And then this fucking promo for Dunkirk plays before it. And it's so fucking loud... That I swear to God, my ears were ringing afterwards. It's too fucking loud. <laughs> to quote uh, Back to the Future, I'm afraid that's just too darn loud. <laughs> Christopher Nolan, too darn loud. Conjuring Nun spinoff. I'm having none of that. It's completely unnecessary and unneeded. Mission Impossible 6 set video. Cool. Tom Cruise greets somebody doing a motorcycle stunt. All right. I'm looking forward to Mission Impossible 6. I really like Rogue Nation. I didn't mind the second trailer for uh, The Mummy either. That was actually surprising. Hitman's Bodyguard. That looks like a lot of fun. Looks like an old school buddy cop movie. I might have said the same sort of things earlier. In, a, in an earlier video, but hey, is what it is. I'm just going through all this news here, trying to see if there's anything that is worth kind of mentioning. Tremors is getting another mo- sequel, direct to video sequel. I don't know about that. Robert Zemeckis, uh, I guess, was in the running for th- to direct the Flash movie, but now he's not. It's too bad because I really would have been curious to see Robert Zemeckis' take on a Flash film. But, you know, I guess that's not going to happen. Akiva Goldsman is going to direct a remake of Firestarter. (sighs) Can we just stop with the remakes? Even though that's one that really could have been done better and would have been a much better movie if Universal wasn't a bunch of dickholes and didn't fire John Carpenter from the film because of the disappointing box office and critical results of the thing. But I'm just I'm just tired of remakes. I'm dead tired of fucking remakes. I'm just I do not give a fuck anymore. Val Kilmer was interviewed on a, and he actually not really interviewed, but he responded on a recent Reddit AMA, AMA asking me anything. And he says he would love to play Batman again. Not going to happen, Val. Although, honestly, I do think you're, you were honestly pretty underrated Batman. I mean, I don't think you're that bad. I, I personally thought you were a better Bruce Wayne than a Batman. Um, but still, I don't think you were really that big of a problem with forever. So that's just my personal opinion. The heat, Michael Mann's heat is getting a prequel. And I love how screen right is like, Heat is finally getting a prequel. Who asked for a prequel to heat? I know I didn't. I don't want to see a prequel to heat. I don't want to see that heat coming around the corner. I really don't. Mike Myers still wants to do Awesome Powers 4. Yeah, baby, not, not, no. Yeah, baby, no. <laughs> it's been too long. And Goldmember was lame. It's been too long. The perfect way to end this is on this bullshit news, because 
I'm just I just I'm just running out of energy. I don't know what else to say about this movie news. It's a lot of the same stuff. Kevin Hart, my, one of my favorite actors, is going to star in the Great Outdoors reboot. Because, yeah, that's exactly what we fucking need. Another reboot of a John Candy film. And that is not going to work. Oh, let's have a black cast like we did for the Uncle Buck TV series. Yeah, that worked so wonderfully, didn't it? How many episodes did that show last? Did Did the full season even air? Why? Why do you have to re- reboot The Great Outdoors? I, I'm sorry, Kevin Hart. It doesn't matter who you get alongside Kevin Hart. You're not going to recapture the magic of John Candy and Dan fucking Aykroyd. Why are you even bothering with this shit? God. I'm so fucking sick of that shit. Really am. And yeah, there's not much else except this bullshit. I guess I'll end it with this. I, I saw this and I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. For $100, Regal Cinemas is offering the ultimate ticket. It's a golden ticket. But it's a Wonder Woman golden ticket. For $100, you can buy a golden ticket from Regal Cinemas that's embossed in fake gold. It's not real gold. It's it's metal. It's got the Wonder Woman logo burned into it. And uh, what it essentially is is a $100 paperweight that becomes useless after you use it once. Who the fuck is going to buy this? Regal, what are you smoking? What is going on here? Whatever you're smoking, I don't want it. I do not want it. Get it the fuck away from me. Because it's clearly frying your brain cells. How much money are they blowing on these $100 Ultimate Wonder Woman tickets? I mean, it's got to be a decent amount of money considering how much it seems like is going into the making these tickets. Fuck. Holy shit. Oh, and actually, I just saw this now, and, and this is actually a better way to end this video so it doesn't end on a low note. Let's end it on a high note. World War Z 2, the sequel to World War Z, a film that surprised me, David Fincher is going to direct it. I am really excited for the sequel to see David Fincher reunite with Brad Pitt, and uh, I really like the first film. So, I'm on board. I just hope to God that this does not end up like Alien 3. Please, David Fincher, please, David, do not do this to me again. <laughs> Don't have a sequel to a franchise that I've learned to appreciate and grown to love and fuck it up like you did with Alien 3. But, David, I'm not blaming you solely for Alien 3's problems. You were just the guy who was asked to try to pick up the pieces. But you could have said no, but at the same time, you're not 100% to blame for all this shit. It was mostly the writers, the producers, and all of that. So, I don't really see the chances of him fucking up World War Z 2 as bad as Alien 3 fucked up the Alien franchise. But, you know, I have to admit, David Fincher going on to do a sequel, make it kind of leery because he hasn't done a sequel, I don't think, since Alien 3. I could be wrong. I'm not super familiar with his entire filmography. But, yeah, it'll be interesting. So anyway, thank you for watching uh, this uh, episode of Talking Cinema. It's been, probably been a bit shorter than some of the other ones. Uh, but I kind of did one fairly recently anyway. Uh, I just wanted to do this to show you guys uh, my new uh, setup here for any every upcoming video on this channel. And uh, stay tuned for more King Kong reviews and more Giant Ape reviews. Because that's I'm going to be going ape uh, for the rest of this month. Like, I mean, not maybe not the rest of the entire month, but for a good chunk of the month, I'm going to be going ape. 
So I hope you guys enjoy the upcoming videos. And as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.